Hello, people. Today I got another knife review coming at you from my dose of Drew here. And today we're going to be looking at this, the CVV Mini Bull Mastiff, which uh, I have never been a cleaver style person, but uh, uh, this was sent in by a friend of me and a friend of the channel. And it was uh, needed a little bit of work to put back together. It was definitely uh, needed some help on that. It was definitely cool. Uh, got this back. This is actually really cool. Uh, I've been surprised by this. Man, that big old, look at that big old thing. That is a tall, fully flat ground blade. Doesn't have a hugely thick blade stock, but it's you know fairly standard. That finger choil and the, and the hand space in it is definitely well worth it. In fact, let's take a look. Let's take a look at some of its family it, compared to some of its family here. There it is next to the CVV Elementum. As you can see, it is really close in size. And to one of its brothers there, the CVV Ortis, which it is somewhat smaller than. Not quite as much hand space, but with the actual thing here, you, if you do have larger hands, you have a good space for your pinky to support it. And you can also get up on the choil and definitely at least as much hand space as the Elementum. Very similar in cutting length, but again, you have that cleaver style blade, which is fantastic. All right, so there it sits in between those. One here, another, another quick little bit here, in between the Kershaw Blur, and not just any leak, but a random leak. Get an idea, it is really close in length to the leak, even though it has that, again, that big wide blade, in this case, 9CR18MOV. Uh, somewhere right in between four, four, high end 440B or low 440C chemically. Um, performance wise, it is a higher, I would say a better corrosion resistant uh, 440C type performance on this thing. That fuller allows you to kick it out real nice. Again, couple couple little bits here just so we can we can get them out. I'm going to do there you go. C J R B mini feldspar. It is really close. In fact, I'm not sure if it's feldspar has a little bit more blade length, but you get a little bit more hand space here on the mini bull mastiff, which is really nice. Uh, even though I love the contouring on the feldspar. And now the Rat 2, again, one of those things. You may get a little bit more just because of the curvature in the Rat 2. But again, especially with this kind of kicker right here, you just get more hand space. A little bit, you know, a little bit bigger for the choil on, on the angle. It's not really a choil. You get a little bit more hand space in a wider, more hand-filling design with this little mini bull mastiff, which is one of the most, uh, you may see me coming back to it, one of the most surprising aspects of this design for me was just how well that handle worked given its design. A little bit here, we have the uh, Mini Griptilian sized Mark II Mini Hogue. Oh, and there we have the Wee Banjo. As you can see, really close to the uh, Mini Hogue, or which is the same size as the Mini Griptilian. No choil, so the Mini Hogue has a lot more blade length, but again, only the, approximately the same hand space without the choil. No access lock, however. And again, once again, much, much, much more hand space than the banter and a taller blade all the way around with a full flat grind and, and pretty much as thin an edge. Again, banter's S35VN, 9CR18 and one v but also approximately half the price. So we have that. Now coming in, coming in one more time on the lar mini or sorry, mid honey badger with a choil. This is where it faces its stiffest, stiffest competition where you, we've got more hand space on the honey badger, including a generously sized choil, similarly sized blade uh, edge length. And again, a tall, thicker blade stock D2, however. Uh, this is definitely the D2 version, for those who have not seen it. 
um, Blue Handle should give it away on the mid size also if you're familiar with Honey Badger. Um, full flat grind, not nearly as tall though at the tallest. It, it, the, at the tallest, the Honey Badger is as tall as the Mini Bull Mastiff at its narrowest, which if you anything about cutting geometry without going too deep into it, that longer, shallower, flat grind on this means that it moves less material as you move through it, or it takes longer to do so and produces less drag as you move it through. One last comparison here for the size, getting into it, the Para 3. Um, very, very similar. This is where it really shines. If you look, hand space, very similar to the Para 3. Blade edge, similar if not more to the Para 3. Blade size, same height at the highest point as the pair of three at its highest point. And if you look at it here, where, oops, sorry about that, you guys. Thinner blade stock than the pair of three. So again, better cutting geometry with similar dimensions. A um, little bit different in that as I'll get to right now. Um, the best geometry is out here near the tip where it has the longest, where it sort of, I mean, we're not going to talk about distal taper and all that sort of stuff where it's got its own long flat grind out there, whereas this really doesn't. So there's no real distal taper. It is simply, wow, look at that. Like that is kitchen knife narrow, you guys. I don't know if I can get it to focus, but look at that. Compared to something like that, right? So yeah, it just, it, 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 it blows right through stuff. And that's really where I found the beauty of this design. Um, I never like, I always thought that the cleaver design looked like it was just silly, but I have actually, in, in utilizing this knife and carrying it and working on it, um, this knife has actually been requested that I, I do some handle work on it and make it make it cool, see if I can, I, I can work on it. But this as an EDC design has grown on me and actually kind of won me over as a very, very practical EDC design when it has that kind of grind. When you're looking at something that has such a long flat grind as well as a robust and supported tip that with that little bit of clip gives it some pretty decent puncturing capability when you're trying to like get it into a box or something. And so for things like box opening, letter opening, being able to get that tip up into, into there and then essentially without getting a very pointy tip, if, you've, if anyone's ever used a letter opener with a very pointy tip, it can actually very often dip in too. You can just really, look, you can you can cut into, get into a letter, get like that and just start slicing through without hardly, right? You got, it's beautiful, works great. You got a lot of good geometry on it. And even where it's, again, even where it's the worst geometry, it's as good as a honey badger's best geometry. Now, is it D2? Is it S35? No, it's 9CR18 MOV, right? Again, right between 440B, 440C. Um, some people would say it's the worst. I think it gives you the best of both worlds. It's a, it's a definitely a very well-rounded budget steel. Um, you, get, you get 440C levels of edge retention. You get 440B levels of corrosion resistance. Um, and the toughness somewhere in between, uh, closer to 440B, given its stuff. In my experience, it does well. And their Damascus that has that has it as a base, which I believe also either has the 100 CR CR15, which is the AUS10 or the VG10 base. They they use both of those as the base. And either steel is really good. This is a again. This is this gives you the best of both 440B and 440C and the 100 CR uh, MOV 15, um, or CR 15 MOV it is essentially AUS 10. Really, really good steel for the money. Um, my, my most preferred steel, no. Better than eight CR, yes. 
My most preferred steel in the budget realm is actually um, either 14C28N for its toughness and edge retention balance or D2 for its edge retention uh, uh, balance. But uh, 14C20N is pretty corrosion resistant, ridiculously tough, easy to get a long lasting razor edge on. D2 is not so much the razor edge, uh, but as, as Avna said, you wanna, you wanna put it, it'll take a rough edge and hold it all day long. Um, but it really does. D2 holds it holds the edge really good in my estimation. D2 is sort of the standard of pocket knife edge retention. If you want to have a super steel, it's got to have at least D2 levels of edge retention, right? You've got good vanadium enriched uh, chromium carbides in there that provide a lot of wear resistance as well as some vanadium. So you can get really good wear resistance on most day-to-day -day use stuff with a reasonable amount of toughness. It's not very chippy. It does tend to roll more. You get to the higher hardnesses, it gets a little chippy. Uh, that being said, 9CR, not chippy at all, relatively tough, much like 14C28N, it tends not to be chippy, tends to dent more than it tends to chip, um, and really it'll tend to wear more than it'll tend to chip, which, which I'm okay with. Strops to a razor edge, like so many other knives, it has small, it has small, uh, or it has essentially chromium carbides. Um, and lots of them, but uh, diamonds or aluminum oxide are hard enough to cut those, and it will take them. It just takes a, a nice edge, you guys, and it's really... Boy, can I get that to focus on it without cutting my hand? Really thin edge. Really thin edge. And, uh, yeah. Cutting beast. Action. Savivi, on bearings, smooth. Is it as smooth as some of the more expensive knives? No, but you don't need it any better, right? You get it in good gravity situation and you can absolutely control it. It not only has flipper deployment on the, on the mechanics, which are great, but you can actually dig your finger into that fuller pretty well and, oops, of course now I can't do it on camera, and, Actually, reverse flick it. You can also do the Medford opening with a long flipper where you actually roll your thumb down the fuller to get it open, which works quite well with this design. Actually, I'm quite surprised. And of course, you have the two-handed opening if you want to grab the fuller, but uh, really, why when you have so many other easy one-handed op opening options on this, right? It is absolutely a joy to use which which brings me to it right the uh the design wasn't one that i had ever been drawn to but i hadn't really used it and then i got this and i tried it um the aesthetics aren't my favorite i don't like the cleaver design i feel like i need to chop something but i, I gotta tell you the mechanics of it not just the ease of use but the mechanics of the blade shape itself in an edc setting for a small, where the better slicing geometry is out near the tip where you, and it's a robust tip, but the better slicing geometry is out there where you often are trying to do a lot of your slicing. It really, even though it doesn't look like it, it's a very, very, very useful blade. Like the, that tip is right underneath my finger. I know where that tip is when I put that down, right? Um, it's an extraordinarily useful EDC blade shape, which really makes the tool mechanics of this knife fantastic in an edc life i'm not chopping up meat or anything with it but this thing will chop up cardboard paper plastic rubber oh my god hard rubber if you've ever had to do it styrofoam anything else you've ever had to get this blade sails right through it and it, it, it relatively decent edge holding where essentially you may want to come back and and you know get some get some of that edge back after you go out with for a box session but it's as simple as stropping it on a, a couple of strop progressions and you are back to easily hair shaving edge without really having to wear down very much of the material at all and maintaining that and with that long flat grind you'll be able to sharpen this for a very 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 long time 
And 9 CR-18, yeah, it's not the best edge retention. It does okay. You will be sharpening a lot if you do a lot of cutting, but really, if you're some, here, here, here's what I can tell you. If you're somebody who opens up a few letters a day, does maybe two to four boxes a week as your EDC stuff, a few packages, right? A couple couple plastic sticks here and there, some tape, some sticky stuff. Stuff that really doesn't contribute to wear resistance or wear, or, or, uh, uh, <laughs> wear and tear, I guess, just wear on the blade so much as it, as it does just, you know, stuff that gets on there and general sort of stress and strain. If you do that, I that's approximating one or two weeks of use on, on mine with just general daily use and, and where I've had this being done. Um, uh, you only have, you'll still have to stop it maybe once a week if you want to keep that hair shaving edge. If you just want to keep a working edge and you have it at like 600 to 1200 grit or something like that, somewhere around there, and you're keeping a working edge going with just a light stropping to pull any burrs, um, oh my, uh, you, you probably won't have to sharpen it, uh, maybe once a month, if that's all you do. I have had some other stuff where I have done some marathon sessions where I've had some boxes where I actually pulled this out to see how the 9CR18 did, and if you, I can tell you, it, after about 20 box breakdowns, this thing's losing some of its edge, maybe a 600 grit or rough, it would give you a little bit. But after about 10 or 12, you know, relatively full-size package boxes, 9CR18 is losing its edge. That's pretty good, right? If you, if you, that, that's, that's a, that's basically a Christmas morning. You know what I mean? And depending on how big your family is, you may, you may need a, you may need a D2 on Christmas. Um, but that's probably a good birthday. You know, you never know. Some paper that, it, it, it'll still do it. I'm not saying it didn't cut. It was just noticeably slowed down on the edge, even though the geometry was still cutting. I could have probably easily cut an, at least another five, if not ten, boxes. Um, and that's really my report on this. This, this uh, uh, I was expecting less. And partly because of my expectations, this really wowed me. Um, and partly just because it is a really good design. This is the short little blade allows you to get a really lot, a, a, a whole lot of leverage on that on that design. That handle space even lets you kind of get back. And again, you can tuck your finger in there and really support it and get back behind the finger guard if you're going to really use it. Or just it has a generous enough choil that you can literally always just hold it on the choil while you're doing work. Just enough handle space, really good blade space, lots of usable design. The aesthetics are kind of a love it or hate it, if you know what I, if you know what I mean. Like maybe you do. I wasn't in love with it, but I have come to appreciate the significant benefits of both this blade shape and design style. Um, so the, the, again, expectations exceeded. Aesthetics and eh, mechanics hard to beat. Um, at this price point, the sliciness of this blade as it goes through stuff is really hard to fault. The action is Civivi fantastic, right? Uh, colors comes in lots. Uh, if you, you may not like the fuller on it as it is not everyone's cup of tea on deployment, but this one is generous and quite well ground and evenly ground as well, so it allows you multiple flipping options while using it most noticeably again the medford slide um and also always the fantastic flipper action that it has all right you guys that that's really hard to beat anything more is that the value one of the last things again is the the cost on this the cost of value under 50 bucks um that's that's really hard to beat that's just really hard to beat on the price point. There's, there's other knives that you can like, right? Like I, like I can tell you my own personal preference in this price range. Um, I'm just thinking of knives that I will would buy more, and of course the Ortises, buddy. 
I, I, I would honestly, for my daily needs, I would pick any of these over this in approximately similar price points, right? Though this one is not the Damascus, the 9CR18 version of the Ortis um, comes in at a similar price to this. And I would choose for my daily life, something like that, more or the bad, I believe the Badlands of Vagabond. And again, the small CJRB, because of the contouring and several other aspects I really like about this particular design and the blade shape, I would ch I would choose. But both of those are a personal preference in the same uh, cost space. A little bit higher. If I was really looking just a little bit higher and I was willing to go through, I would probably actually go and I would recommend the Honey Badger series um, where you can get them. They, they are the same price in 8CR13, not my favorite. Really, Honey Badger, if you guys are listening, you want to really, 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 really make everything fantastic. Change your base stainless to 14C28N for your stainless, your tough stainless op option. And then give D2 for your wear resistance option. Um, and watch, you'll never have to change steels. You'll never have to do anything else again except get different, keep making your stuff really cool. Those are some of my two favorite steels in the budget world. And the modularity of the Honey Badger design makes it a better buy in my estimation. But again, these are personal preferences and what I like. I like that you can go onto the Honey Badger website, get a white scale and customize it. So they, they, they really take kind of, you know, the builders and the customizers and those guys into account and allow you to take what is a budget knife, even though it's closer to the $60 mark than the $45 mark that this is. You do it. But it's $60 for that. It's $20 for scales. You got to put in the work. You don't want to do that, and I don't blame you. You want to buy one knife, and you're like, you know what? I want something that's got just there. I want an EDC knife that's going to do what I need an EDC knife to do and not make me have to work that hard. Believe it or not, this is a great option. The mechanics of it when it comes to opening and closing, as good as anything you'll find, if not better than everything at this price point, there's... Nothing you can unequivocally say is better when it comes to action than a Civivi at this price point. And there's many at higher price points that aren't as good. Um, so the action on it is, okay, the mechanics of the blade, thinner stock, tall as a spider co, full flat, it even has the fuller, which will help break up stuff on softer on softer materials that you might be going through like meat cheese or anything like that just as it gets to the edge so you'll you'll get an air break just as it gets there so it will tend to unstick there's a lot of flat you know the granite edges down here do a better job but you can still move through soft material quite easily as well as harder stuff like paper and cardboard mechanics hard to beat um and that's really where this shines you guys it, it really is a fantastic edc shape what's the worst part that carry profile right where your deep carry clip is so here's your pocket edge and there's your clip right so you're sitting in pocket like this you're sitting that far away from the pocket edge well that in your pocket that takes up a lot of hand space in the pocket if there is one thing I don't like about these, this design, or more appropriately, these designs in general, where it gets wider at the tip, it's in the carry. In the use, it's absolutely fantastic. In the carry is where the problems are. I'm actually more okay with like the spider coast style where it's wider down here because I can get my hand past it easier and I'm usually not going all the way to the bottom where it starts to become a problem. This one's just the opposite. It's harder to get my hand in, but then it keeps everything like the pocket po pocket pecker, as uh, Shabazz would say, uh, from from really being a thing. It, it angles it away from all of the stuff in my pocket, 
gives me more room in the bottom, but it's getting my hand in my pocket that this thing really presents the biggest problem. And that's really the biggest complaint about this design. Everything else is good. It exceeded my expectations. The mechanics of it are top notch. The cutting mechanics of it are again, top notch. The design is true to what it is supposed to be. They don't pull anything off. The lanyard hole, not, not something I use, but it is at least chamfered. So it is more than just an afterthought and it'll probably tend not to cut anything you put through it. Deep carry clip that is truly deep carry at the highest point of the knife. So it is all the way in making the most of the package. And again, just a, just a really, really, really good system, really, really good blade for EDC. If you don't mind the pocket um, entry space being intruded upon by this tall of a profile, I mean, that's an inch and a half out of your, that's almost an inch and a half out of your pocket uh, entry space there where you're trying to put your hand in. But it's a smooth entry. Your pinky slides right alongside of it. There's more space as you get down. So it's only when you first get in, once, once your hand gets in there, it's, you know, it, you actually have more space to move around. You can grab something. It, it, it doesn't have a problem. It's just the pocket entry. Once again, you guys, those are my biggest complaints. Everything else is really good. This is easy to maintain, easy to use, fantastic, be and a good EDC, highly recommendable. I would say buy it if you're looking for something, especially if you're looking for one knife for general EDC that is extraordinarily practical on a budget and a good price and you don't mind a Chinese brand that uh, works really hard at maintaining high quality that is truly, regardless of where they make their knives, is a world-class brand of knives. Um, all right, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this. This is the mini bowl mastiff, a good knife, good buy, and highly recommendable for EDC use. Thanks, everybody. This has been a dose of Drew. I am said Drew. Go ahead, like, comment, subscribe, and all that stuff that makes the algorithm happy. Watch it twice. Comment in the morning. Come back and get another dose. Thanks again, everybody.